Hey folks, so I'm going to try to rail through this because my last take of this video is like 25 minutes long and I went on a couple rants. <laughs> I don't have anyone to talk to. Uh, okay, uh, let's get started. So uh, control sequences. Uh, this is, to put it kind of in layman's terms, it's the background scenes behind uh, assembly commands. Um, and they're divided into steps. So each step represents a clock cycle and there's two types of step chunks so you have your first three steps of the execution of your command so let's say your command is move that your first three steps are always going to be part of the fetch phase and then your steps from four onward will be your execution phase i hope you guys like my messy writing Now here, this fancy diagram is a CPU. It's a very simple representation of a CPU, mind you, and the reason why we use a simple one is just to make things simpler. It'd be a lot, it'd be way too complicated if we used a modern processor for what we're doing. Uh, so let's see, let's start with an example. Um, let's do this one. Okay, so we have move, and then we have a post increment. And then we have a pre-decrement. Okay, so this should be just a review for you guys what, what this does. Um, basically, uh, here for our source, we are looking at the contents of A2, and we are moving them into the destination. Now, after we've looked at A2, we increment it for the next guy. So the next call to A2 will be an incremented address. That's what the post decrement is. Uh, post increment is. And now pre decrement is the same concept, except that we do the decrement first. Now this is going to be really important later on for our control sequence, so we'll go over it um, again in a bit. But you decrement first, so you check out what's in A3, the address, and then you decrement it, and then you read it for your storing purposes. So you're taking the thing in A2, the address in A2 then you're subtracting from the A3 address and you're storing it in the subtracted address. I don't know, that, that might look a little confusing. But again, that should just be a review for you guys. Uh, if I haven't made a, I don't think I've made a video on that stuff yet, unless it's stacks. But if you want me to make a video just on post increment and uh, pre-decrement, just let me know. Do, do, do. Oops. Okay. Let's get started. So let's do our fetch phase. The very first thing we want to do is PC out. Now, if you don't know what PC is, you got a bit of a problem. I would watch my uh, stacks video. I don't know if I actually explain it in detail in my stacks video. Anyway, the program counter just kind of keeps track of your lines of code, you could say. So the program counter is where your commands are stored. So basically here we have move, which is what we're dealing with right now. And then as you increment the program counter, you'll have different commands. Okay, so right now we have our command in program counter. We want to pull it out. So that's PC out. Very simple. But where do we put it? Well, we have an address register. It's called MAR. So we can pull our address from program counter, pump it into MAR. Oops. And we can't read directly from the PC, so the MAR is particularly useful because we can figure out what our command is from the MAR. So after PC out, we do MAR in. And now that it's in the address register, like I said, we can read from it now. So now we can kind of figure out what our command is. And now we want to increment our program counter for the next guy. So if we didn't increment, you would basically just be reading the same command over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Uh, which we don't want. We want to increment the program counter so that we can look at the next line. We don't do that within this pro this um, this control sequence, but we want to leave the incremented address for the next guy so that he doesn't have to worry about it, right? So the way that we do that is we clear Y. Now our Y register is right here. It's plugged into our ALU. If you don't know what an ALU is, please watch my ALU video. Um, it's basically a giant calculator. <laughs> 
and then you have cn. Now cn is strange because all it does is pretty much c is equal to c. Actually, no, it's not even that. It's just c is equal to 1. We're adding nothing to 1 so that we can end up with just 1 because that's how much we want to increase our program counter by. We just want to pump it up by 1. So right now, because we cleared y, y is just nothing. And then c is going to be 1. And if you remember, C is our carrion for our ALU for adding, which is what we're doing right now. So we add nothing to 1. We end up with 1. You guessed it. And the result gets pumped in to Z. Z is kind of our result register. So that goes into Z. And now we want to deal with Z. So we have Z out, but now we have our increased program counter. It's ready for the next guy. So we can just pump that back into PC in. And now we wait memory function complete. WMFC is kind of the catch all. It kind of tells us the CPU, like, hey, buddy, like, I need you to relax for a second and finish up what you've already done. It's kind of the parent telling the CPU to eat its vegetables before it can get to the dessert. <laughs> uh, oh, I actually really like that analogy. I'm proud of myself for that one. Uh, so it's it's just telling itself, like, hey, just slow down, finish everything before you move on. And that's really important when you're dealing with program counters, because if the next guy comes in and he sees the old program counter, he won't know it's the old one. So he's just going to read the old one, <laughs> and you're going to be reading the same command over and over and over and over and over. That's what we want to avoid. So when you're changing your program counter, when you're changing addresses like this, you always want to wait until the memory function is complete. All right, so final step in the fetch phase. We are going to do MDR out. MDR is our data register, and it's right here. So when we do our read, I'm not too sure of the very intricate details of control sequences, but when we do our read, which is right here, I think that it pumps the data that we need into the MDR. So during the fetch phase, we look at our data. We want to pump that out. And where are we going to put it? We want to put it in the instruction register so we can use it. So that's the fetch phase. Um, the fetch phase is consistent for every single command. So for every command that you do, you can pretty much just memorize the fetch, fetch phase and just paste it right in. And I want to say nine times out of ten and it'll be right. I can't think of a situation where it wouldn't be right. Uh, anyway, so let's move on to the execution phase. Um, so we have a source and we have a destination. Now we have registers for source and destination as well. They're not in the diagram. It's a super useful diagram, I suppose. Um, so we do our source out. This means our source register, we're pumping it out. And where are we putting it? our address register because that's what the address register is for so the address of our source is getting pumped into the address register and now we read it and this is really important remember post uh, post increment we look at the contents first before we increment so that's what we're doing right now we haven't incremented um, a2 yet so we read it first right and now we're going to increment it exactly how we did in the fetch phase. So we're going to clear Y, we're going to put 1 into C, we're going to add, and that's going to go into Z. Okay, and now 5. 5, we take what's in Z, Ooh, that's a fancy Z, take what's in Z, and we put it back into the source register. And the reason we do that is, again, because of the post increment. We incremented A2. So for the next guy who reads A2, we want to have the incremented value. It's the same concept as with PC. So we just kind of toss it back into the source register. So the next time someone does our source out, it'll be the incremented address. All right, number six. Now we're going to deal with the destination. And it's a very similar concept to with uh, the source, except that we're writing to the destination and we're also decrementing first. So we're not even going to do any of that address register stuff yet. We're going to just do clear Y, 
to clear up y, we want to subtract 1. So we're still doing cn, but then here we're going to do sub instead of add. Because again, it's, it's a pre-decrement. So we're decrementing a3. So we're subtracting from there. That'll get launched into z as usual. And we'll do wait memory function complete just to be on the safe side. And the reason we did it here and not in number four is because we're immediately going to have to deal with the decremented address because we decrement and then we look at the address, right? So the address we're looking at has already been decremented. So we want to make sure that that's been done first before using it. So we're not just using the old value of A3. Number seven, we look at what's in Z and now we can do the important stuff. So we do MIRN from Z. Oh, I'm going to burp. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was kind of gross. Now we're going to write. So we're writing from the source to the destination. So remember, our address register is now containing the decremented address of A3. So that's where that's going. OK, and then we're writing. Good, good, good. And then we toss that back into the destination so that the next guy can use the proper address. And again, wait memory function complete because it would be an awful tragedy if we started using the wrong address. And step number eight is my favorite step. And that's it. So you can do a move in eight clock cycles. Um, control sequences are kind of like programming in the sense that there is no single way to do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it you ideally want to aim for the fewest uh, CPU cycles as possible. So here we did it in eight cycles, um, but who knows, maybe someone knows how to do it in seven or six or something like that. Um, I wouldn't know. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's it. Uh, feel free to suggest ideas for new videos and subscribe and like and whatever, whatever. Thank you for watching and happy studying.